Does it make sense to have multiple cabinets per each floor in your Luxon installation? What are the advantages and disadvantages? And why am I not in the studio? Because I'm always super busy and I have the next appointment in a few minutes, but I took the chance to make a quick video here in my hometown in Austria, beautiful city, and now you will learn the advantages and disadvantages of every option. First, let's talk about a central cabinet, one for the whole installation. One of you guys added me on LinkedIn and asked the exact the same question. He has a three floor villa, super huge building, lots of locks on devices. It's his first project and he's now thinking on how to do it in a proper way. So the advantage of everything in a central cabinet, a central panel, is that you can use the in and outputs of the relay extensions, digital inputs in the most efficient way. If you have more cabinets, more floors, then you might need five relays in this floor, 15 in that floor, and the Loxon modules relay extension, for instance, always has 14 outputs. So the chances are high that if everything would be in one panel, the amount of devices would be less. Next advantage is that everything is centralized in one place. So if there is any errors, any mistakes, you know where to look. Now coming to multiple cabinets, which is super easy to achieve. There is two ways. First option is you go with the Loxon link from panel one to panel two, panel three. In a line topology, daisy chain, please don't mix it up in a star or something. This leads to stupid mistakes. So in the panel one, you have the mini server relay extension, tree extension, airbase extension. And then at the very end, you go up to 500 meters in total cable length to the next panel. Also do not forget at the very end of the line to put the 120 ohm resistor for a proper termination of the bus. It's also super important if you start using separate power supplies, 24 volt, in cabinet one, cabinet two, cabinet three, that you connect the grounds from each power supply to one another. If it's not possible to put the link through the different cabinets, like in my house, I retrofitted. I think I now have four mini servers in total and they're all connected in a client gateway via the network into one whole Loxon system. Downside, yeah, could be that if the network is down, the communication between the mini servers is also not possible. But on the opposite, there is different mini servers operating independently. So if one floor has a power loss or a mini server damage for whatever reason, the others are not affected. The big and obvious advantage of multiple cabinets, of course, is that you save a lot of effort in the wiring. If you have lots of cables for shading, switched sockets, lights, whatever, then you have lots of cables coming and sometimes it's just easier not to put them all together in the main DB, but to have them in separate sub cabinets per floor, for instance, which is totally fine if you can live with maybe a few relay extensions more in total. The second big reason for sub cabinets is the 24 volt stuff, especially when it comes to LED strips, lots of spots, lots of tree devices, like the ceiling light, like other stuff, then you might end up with voltage drop depending on the cable length and the total load you put on it, which might be a problem. Because depending on the device you have, a motion sensor, present sensor, can live with 9 to 28 volt, whereas a Loxon tree spot, I think, can only handle 10% voltage drop, so round about 22 volt. And this voltage drop has a few factors. First is the wattage you have, which can typically not be decreased very easily. Maybe if you say, okay, I pull another cable into the room and split the load, that's the only way to decrease the wattage. Then the cable length, which can be decreased if you have sub cabinets, and then the diameter of the cable can be increased, which is typically fine. But just take in mind that if it comes to RGBW or tunable white LED strips, it's almost impossible to properly solder a five core wire 2.5 square millimeter to an RGBW strip. Impossible, right? Then I will somewhere plan a cable box, a connection box, where you have the incoming line coming with a high diameter and then a very short distance with a lower diameter to the RGBW LED strip. 
Let's make a little calculation here. There is online tools if you just Google voltage drop calculation. Let's say we have 24 volt, we have a 200 watts load, let's say 10 meter lead strip, depending on the type of course. We have 20 meter of cable length, then we take a 1.5 square millimeter cable like the Loxon tree bus cable, and then we check for the voltage drop. There is one other trick that you can use which is to increase the voltage from 24 to 28 volt in the cabinet. And with proper power supplies with a screwdriver, you can set the voltage, but on the locks on power and backup, you can even do this in the software in the config. And if you then have 20% voltage drop on 28 volt, which is round about six volt, then you might still end up with just enough to power the locks on tree spots. My personal preference in a normal house, one family home, is that I have everything in one central cabinet together. Also with lead strips and spots and stuff, I typically do not face any issues. And the very last trick in this video is that you can also put the power supplies near to the lead strips or the spots, but mainly it's an issue for lead strips because of the wattage somewhere in the drywall, typically in the ceiling. So then you power it with 230 volt and then you have the bus cable maybe from the push button, from the touch somewhere, or in the, in the ceiling from the present center of the room, you take the tree bus line, and then you have an RGBW dimmer, compact version in the drywall. And that's also typically a super nice solution. But if you do so, please never forget to also in this scenario, you have to put the minus of this decentral power supply in the gypsum, you have to connect the minus to the minus of the main DB. And the easiest way to achieve this is that you connect the minus in the cabinet to the protective earth, the PE, and then you can do the same thing in the drywall. You have the phase and the neutral to power the 24 volt supply, and then you take the protective earth to also connect it to the minus of the output of the supply. Now I have to go. I hope this quick video where I just spoke freely out of my stomach was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments down below where you're from, if you're an end customer, having Loxon at home, if you're a Loxon partner, and what topics are you most interested in the future videos. See you there.